I figure if I can feel the ribs pop, I'm doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Beer 30 Live, everybody. On that note, we have a new father joining us. Marco, congratulations, brother. Congratulations on the uh, new uh, polls. The new poll. Definitely a new coal. Big, a big, big coal. He's a big dude, this kid. Yeah, he uh, he waited. He came out like a six month old. Uh, He actually had a pack of cigarettes and he's like, hey, it pops, how about a light? And I was like, well, why not? Uh, 10 pounds, 11 ounces. Wow. Oh no, 10 pounds, 12 ounces. 23 inches long. However, here's the deal. 23 inches, like at two feet tall. She was at, he was actually over 24 inches, but apparently their heads shrink a little bit. Yeah. And the nurse was like, I'm not going to count. I'll count at 23. And I'm like, lady, she, he's pushing 24 and a quarter at yeah. least. Um, it's a big baby, yeah. So he's, nice. she's not going to count the swollen head? No. That's fair enough. Well, apparently they're supposed to. Like, all the other nurses were like, this no. This is in your medical opinion, Matt? That's awesome. That's we only awesome. count shrunken heads where, where I work, too. So. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so a big, big baby. He's... Um, Let's see, he was born last Wednesday, so he's seven plus two, nine days old. Nine days old. And yeah. you, you look uh, pretty tired, actually. Uh, I'm a shitty husband. I just <laughs> I sleep all night. <laughs> I was going to say, he looks uh, a lot more peppier than everyone else. Here. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> a lot of coke, too. I is, do. That, yeah. is that it? Uh, well, so we're trying to figure this out. Apparently, children eventually get into routines. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. And so my wife and I, being the analytical people we are, we have this giant whiteboard that we've been charting every single thing that happens with him. Uh, very specifically, like exact time, how many ounces, color, if you know what I mean. Like, And we've been trying to... Were you supposed, was that an innuendo of some sort? Well, color? he's got, got a lot of poo. If you, if you know what I mean. Oh. Color of poo. Oh. <laughs> today he's, yeah. he's he's Latin today. Yeah. Tomorrow, maybe he'll be pushing Asian. Yeah. So... Uh, and then we've been trying to take all this raw data and like glean some type of pattern or rhythm from it. Turns out at nine, nine days, they're really not that logic. It's not, they're not thinking like that. They just pretty much get up, poop, eat, and sleep whenever they want. So, and there's this no is analysis a, to be made. This is a first world discussion if I've ever heard one. I'm just saying, I mean, I think. Well, we, is it, is it, is it in like Dubai. <laughs> Oh, Dubai's a wrong place. Yeah, no, not Dubai. Dubai. They've got a nicer They've whiteboard. They've got a really in, nice whiteboard in, in Dubai. Dubai. It's got like an indoor, and ski, shit on it. indoor <laughs> ski resort. Uh, but you know, it's, it's hanging out in, in like rural Bangladesh. Yeah, there you go. Uh, no whiteboard. Coloring poo. Yeah. Judging the color of poo. Yeah, that's true. Well, we're kind of, I'm, you know, we're analytical people, my wife and I, I think. Um, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And then we're just kind of stuck with it. It's the actually it's the only routine we got out of the whole thing is writing it down. <laughs> the Goog. Hello, Matt, Matt Googler. Hello, how are you? Good. I'm happy to be here. It's good to see you. I'm actually happy to be here. <laughs> right here. How's the beer? Good. Today we're trying a curveball. Yeah, it's a little seasonal action going on there. Yeah, I think this was uh, <clears throat> explained as a lawnmower beer. Yeah, after somebody else mows your lawn. <laughs> You need to pound out a few of these buds. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you. Uh, it's been a long two weeks. Uh, Kurt, Sifford. Hello. What are you enjoying today? I'm enjoying... Actually, what, a maybe it's burger. on there. It's a honey thing. It's a honey beer. Oh, you're the honey beer a guy. honey owl. We got it on there. We might not have it on there. It's very good, though. Oregon it's honey beer. Oregon honey beer. I was close. Close. Is it nice? <laughs> Two out of three. It's very it's, we're all drinking very light beers. That it's, seems kind it's of It's light, but it's flavorful. It's warm outside. A little summery. I think we should all next time get different beers. I feel like I have nothing to add to the discussion because I'm also drinking the curveball. We could actually start that today. I think we should... Ex- we do that on round two. Explain the full extent of our lemmingness because not only do we all basically drink the same beer, we... Two at, or three out of the four of us ordered the exact same food too with the That's Chipotle right. tacos. The Chipotle tacos, which are still oh, amazing. Yeah, fantastic. It is amazing. I, and, I did cross uh, it up this time. I got the did. garden burger with the bacon on it. You did. 
but you were kind of thinking about the tacos. God, that's like a little bit? Just a little bit. I don't know. I had pork it. Well, there's the bacon on the dog pork. How, how are you doing as a vegetarian? <laughs> Yeah, did that's. You just, uh, did you just insult me? I'm just finding more and more creative ways to fall off the wagon on that. <laughs> I, I have I have still mostly avoided beef, although I mean I think that. See, when I started out being vegetarian, when I started going off of the vegetarianism, um, it was kind of the slippery slope. You know, the first uh, rule was like, well, I'm vegetarian except for pizza. No, no, no. It was it was vegetarian except for Tuesdays. <laughs> Tuesday pizza. That was actually my first non-vegetarian meal, but. Um, <laughs> No, it was, it was like, I'm, I'm vegetarian except for, like, you know, really good quality social engagements. You know, like going out for an expensive dinner. Oh, yeah. and, and, like else is and, then I, and then I just kind of expanded it to, like, you know, I'm vegetarian except for really good social engagements and, and really good food. It's really, really good food. And then, you know, I, I really like pizza. So <laughs> that's really good food to me. But, uh, no, I mean, I, it's basically been everything except for beef lately, except, you know, last uh, week I took my friend Sarah out and... We went to Portland City Grill, which has some really nice food, and she ordered a filet mignon with lobster tail on top of it, and I had a couple of big bites of that. And surf and turf. Yeah. yeah that was check amazing. you out. That was really good. Was it a, a date, or was it a friend out to dinner? Friend out to dinner. It was her first date. Yeah. yeah. And don't ever say that again. <laughs> I, well, after last week with the whole kicking the ball story, I thought maybe he was rebounding. I could oh, get something man. back. No, I don't think I'm quite to the rebound I phase with her yet. I still from that. Yeah. When I think of that story. Just so you know, <laughs> the girl who made me a chick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I still have not gone out on another date since then. Okay. I've, I've uh, dragged my feet on two or three other women, and <laughs> we tried making plans to meet, and I'm like, you know, I'm not really up to it. <laughs> so there's been a couple that just disappeared. <laughs> wow. <'Cause laughs> it's too much work to get together. <laughs> That's exactly. Uh, you know. When you when you have that kind of a scorecard, that where you just have that kind of a track record of the kind of, of action oh, that, that Casanova Kurt here. Oh my God! See, you're, our listeners are going to be having this very inaccurate. <laughs> Casanova Kurt's version of action is you going out on one or two dates and then like it, it just going horribly. You know? <laughs> I think they're going to have a pretty accurate version of what <laughs> <laughs> after last week's story oh, yeah. or two weeks ago's story. I think yeah. it's pretty spot on. <laughs> We're going to have to like build into our editorial calendar how you're going to lay out some of these classic Casanova Kurt stories. Oh, man. There are some voice? really good ones. Mm. <laughs> you guys went to the hospital, I mean, like nine times. Yeah, actually, we had a forward our summarily mail. Summarily excused. Yeah. We actually got our mail forwarded to the to hospital. To the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not really, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is our first child. Yeah. And really, they always say you know when you're in labor, and no one tells my wife what she knows or doesn't know, so that would just enrage her more. Like, and that's how everyone explains it. Oh, you know, you know. So we knew about seven times before it actually happened that we were in labor, <laughs> and we finally got there um, last Sunday, Sunday before last, and started this whole thing up. Uh, started the process of child birthing and it took till end of day or middle of evening Wednesday to actually produce this child mm. well every 12 hours they have shift change right and basically the entire hospital like just punches out and a new round comes in right problem is with Kaiser is I don't think they write stuff down like what's <laughs> happening or necessarily talk to each other so we had I think we had four or five midwives in the time we were there and three different times we had complete sea changes in what we were doing like one midwife was like saying you know x y and z and then she'd be like oh but my shift ends in four or five minutes so the next midwife will finish the stuff for you and then the next midwife comes in and be like oh that one's crazy i don't know what she's talking about we're gonna do a b and c oh no and to a woman that hadn't slept in a week who's in like painful labor this is a good way to be very uh well, piss her off. I don't yeah. know how to say it. So the does, thing does anger increase the? Uh, does, that, does that help the process along? It turns out it gives your baby jaundice. <laughs> <laughs> so then, well, that's not that's not funny. No, it's, it's not, not good at it's all, not is it? Laugh at. Uh, Too soon? No, I can laugh at it because it's it's over now. But yeah. So she's in labor for like 128 days, right? Or three days yeah. at at Kaiser. 
turns out she's in labor. She, the baby's being stressed, and he turns out he gets jaundice. So what happens is the middle, of, like first thing in the morning, they barge into our room. What's jaundice? It's elevated bilirubin levels. Yeah. See, this is where I'm going with this. They grab the Wait, kid. Say, say that again. I just like hearing you say medical terms. It's elevated bilirubin. Who Billy Rubin? I don't have a clue. Some dudes. <laughs> well, no, seriously, they're like two guys. I thought for John, you're supposed to give him some kind of citrus. And, and <laughs> light. Scurvy, dude. Yeah. Scurvy. Oh, He's oh, not man. a sailor. He's a baby. Any other healthcare plan? Not enough I, <laughs> I got this thing on my back. Could you take a look? Um... <laughs> So they bust into the room. We're asleep because he's. This is our first night with our child. Um, he's like 12 hours old. They grab him and they're like, "He's got jaundice. We've got to take him to the NICU." And they just like are out of the room. Did they, and they didn't take you or. Well, they, you can follow, but yeah. we got to go right now because shift change is in 45 minutes, and we got to get this done before <laughs> oh, shift change. And before I'm the like, next shift comes. Yeah, out. she's like, I want to get this joke. wrapped up. <laughs> and this is what they're. This is, and so he actually had to be under lights. And there's a there's video up on my site. Uh, we could probably post it to uh, Beer 30 Live too, but there's video of him up under these lights, and there, it looks like a rave in this room. It's like a black light, and he's wearing. They hood him. They, they make him wear a hood because he can't. go wreck his eyes. Yeah. And he had to stay under these lights from Wednesday or Thursday morning till end of day Saturday. But you can't like touch him or anything like that. He's just like under these lights. Did you put this in your analysis? Because this might be handy down the road. When yeah, he's crazy. To, to know yeah. that is this on your whiteboard? But I, I, uh, it's gonna be crazy. Like, oh yeah, we well, started out in a rave. <laughs> yeah, like four days. And then, you know, it's just all on sorts of three, crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> it's one o'clock in the morning, and we're trying to feed him in the NICU. And then they're one of the nurses is like, "Oh, by the way, we think he has an effect." She's like leaving, like walking away from me with her back turned to me, and like kind of looking over. We think he has an effect. We're gonna give him an IV. And two days of intravenous um, antibiotics. But, like, just in passing, she just drops this. And I'm like, are you kidding? And she didn't think she needed to actually, like, tell us about that or that that was going to happen. Um, needless to say, my wife, kind of pissed, calling doctors at midnight that night from our room. It was... Um, <laughs> like, prank calling? No, we actually she- got him on the phone. And my wife was like, I need to talk to your superior. And I'm like... We're going there, okay. I'm like. looking for Amanda, kiss and hug. <laughs> Is there an Amanda, kiss and hug there? So basically, we're going to be part of a case study um, that Kaiser's putting together okay. about what not to do. Oh, um, yeah. wow. Like, no, no, it's like a study about system-wide communication Failure. breakdowns. Because these bro- breakdowns happen in three different departments, and uh, but all to us. In four days or, or in a week. No, so. so you're serious about that? That's, yeah, that's not a bureaucratic. They like came in there like joke. we're doing a case, like we we asked to speak to someone to complain, and they sent in a social worker. So we've had our baby for like 24 hours, and so she's like, "I am a social worker." And we're like, "Dude, we've had this kid for like an hour and a half. So you are we not have not done it. anything." I'm like, <laughs> "Whatever's happened to him, I wasn't even there, man. He's been in that NICU since the get go." So and she's like, "Oh, I'm a patient advocate, blah blah blah." Here's things you don't want to be when you grow up. Uh, we want to speak to someone to complain to. Oh, hold on one second. We'll get them. Yeah. <laughs> That's your job? <laughs> You're the guy. Yeah. You're the guy. And we actually had a... great big target on your head. <laughs> and we had a doctor, too, who was a very cool doctor, which we like a lot, but was like, we're like, we can't believe they would just take our baby and do all this stuff without asking. She's like, yeah, the courts are kind of on our side here. Like, that was... They are coming back. So, like, once we have the baby here in the hospital, we can pretty much do what we want. I was like, oh, sweet. Well, that's good to know. See, the thing, Homework, is, the that's thing, all I'm saying. The thing about the... Oh, man. You know, the thing about it is, about just the system in general, and I, Matt, I'm sure you will jump on this bandwagon. Once something happens, anything, any, anything can be a trigger event. And that trigger event causes this cascade, like this domino cascade of tests and and monitoring and, and the things that they just, they just have to do. And well, you don't get any control of it. One of the nurses said it was a catch-22. She goes, this test that we're doing is a catch-22. Like, we have to do the test because we did this, but if we do this test, we know we're going to find this, which means we have to do this other thing. Yeah. Like, it just kind of all just falls in play. Probably like a 99% false positive rate, too. And it turns out he was fine. He didn't have anything wrong with him at all, but they were safe and sorry. So I got to yeah. watch my, you know, 28-hour son be poked in the foot with needles yeah. in the hand, in the head. They like to take it from right here in the yeah. forehead. It was pretty not possible. Now, the birth actually ended up being a cesarean, right, after all that? 
Yeah, she got the best of both worlds. She had a, a standard birth for three days, and then and then a cesarean for fifteen minutes. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And did here's you, the thing yeah, about did this. Did you watch? I really want to. Did you watch the organs? I got it in uh, 1080i. Can we put that on the website? No, <laughs> I will not. Show. Here's what happened: is they don't really want you bringing in a camera. Um, but your camera's really wee small. It, it is. So I slide it in the pocket of my scrubs, right? But the freaking sh- the record buttons on the bottom when it drops in, it turns it on. Boom. So I'm like all sly in the OR, bust it out, go to press record. I'm actually pressing pause. Oh, man. So for the next oh, hour and 15 no. minutes of me like talking to Cole, I'm actually pausing all the good stuff and recording it in my pocket for an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, Some pretty man. good audio. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. But. Two things about this that were kind of gnarly. They put this big lamp above so they can see. They put a piece of glass over the lamp so they can clean it off. Turns out glass is kind of reflective, like a mirror. So she's laying there, and you look up, and there's like a mirror over the over the little privacy so she curtain. Could watch herself being cut up, being splayed. Yeah, I oh, saw man. like a tails from the crypt, <laughs> just like that. Yeah. yeah, this was that. The other thing that was kind of gross is if she turned her head to the left, you know the suction when they suction out all the that bucket, the clear bucket was like resting by her head. So if she went like that, you know, turned to the left, she could just see it That's fill up. That's awful. It's like medical waste. It is. And then it's like shaking the table because it's... Oh, my God. That is so awful. So... Thank you. uh, So, by about day four, she was like, see what it's going to cost to get you on health net. And I'm like, all right, because we're going to move a family. Like, we're not... There's no way I'm going back into a Kaiser. Can I tell you my best uh, baby poop story? I have have a good baby... Actually, there are several good baby poop stories, but... We are I'm so uh, not ever having kids. No. no. <laughs> if you knew half the shit that you had to go through. I'm yeah. learning it as I get older. Yeah, this is a problem. My wife was like, if someone would have told me like a quarter of what happened yeah. to my body the last week, I would have never done this. Never and I'm like, it. I was telling us, yeah. like, this is ridiculous. If someone it's, just told me they were going to put a bucket next to my head. Full of my <laughs> own former, my body's own now medical waste. Yeah. I don't think I'd you do know, that. Stuff that was in my body keeping me alive now has a hazardous material <laughs> sign on it, right? Well, and the How's mirror that? thing is incredible to me. Yeah. Like, it's a straight-up mirror. Like, if she's looking up, she That's just creepy. sees her guts. Yeah. So my daughter, uh, Sophie, is, you know, God love her. She's five now. But when she was uh, not yet one, she she had some explos- explosive like bowel capability. Oh, yeah. And uh, I had her she's on the an changing enthusiastic table. girl. She's very she enthusiastic. She's got a lot of energy. Cool. And the, the way the changing table was, it was lined up against the wall, and then right at the end of the changing table was the diaper bin, and, and our cat used to sit on the diaper bin, and, and you know, so it would be at kind of eye level for the change, and I like to be near Sophie, they get along very well, they're very close. And I, uh, so I'm changing Sophie, and I take off the diaper, and I leave her for, what, five seconds unsheathed, and... Uh, she kicks the legs up in the air, and boom! Out of this girl comes a shot of poop that sprays the cat, oh. the wall, like three feet away. I mean, the works. She did. She poop sprayed everything. The cat, of course, gets this. It and gets sprayed. It does the does the freak out head shake. You know the oh my god, this substance on me. I hate you know water and this is poop. Bolts. It starts rubbing all over the walls down the hallway as she kind of tries to get it off her face. It was the most awful thing. Oh, my God. It, the stuff you run into, oh man. So I went this week uh, to the doctor for my vasectomy consultation. Oh. As I hit you the, the, the vas. Yeah. Well, I mean, idea. as soon as you talked about <laughs> excellent idea, it is the perfect ending to a beautiful uh, episode. <laughs> I got more crotch pain. Why? Is, how come every time we do this, there's crotch pain? I'm gonna tell you, it's. I had a lot of crotch pain. With the so process. what did they say? Well, first of all, you go in. I, by the doctor, I had choices between two doctors. Male. I was asking. Yeah, they're they're guys, but the first one that I didn't go with is uh, his name was, and I'm, this is not a joke. First doctor's name was Doctor Blanks. <laughs> doctor Rosenbaum. <laughs> You're uh, fucking kidding me. Doctor Blanks, uh, a, a real urologist doing real vasectomies. I thought, you know, if this guy, this is going to be the guy to go to until I, I got my next He's recommendation, which actually Ted recommended. This guy who's had family, friends, everybody. Doctor Rosen. Doctor. Rosen. No, <laughs> doctor uh, I'm going to spell it for you. F U C K S. No, F U C H S. Fuchs. Yes. 
Dr. Fuchs. <laughs> F U C K S. Not that. No. F U C H S. And I thought, well, there, if it's either Dr. Fuchs or Dr. Blanks, I can't go really go wrong. Oh. <laughs> so I go to Dr. Fuchs, and I, first of all, they send you this letter when you make the appointment. Says, you know, you're gonna. It's, this is gonna be a very. Uh, you, you know, here's all the things that you need to know, and my uh, my office staff. Uh, I have an assistant, uh, Natalia, who will take care of you. She's very warm and very kind. Good with the razor. And, uh, well, very warm, very kind. And here, here are the things you need to know. And then proceeds to list all the things that could go wrong. <clears throat> what are those exactly? Save me a trip and just tell me now. Well, there, there are a number of things. Uh, there is, uh, when the, uh, well, i got to tell you this in, in different order, because Hang on. So I There's go in. I, th I read the letter and I <laughs> underline all the things that gave me concern. And, and most of them were, were centered around, you know, um, uh, pain in your testicles forever. No, 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 yeah. no. no. <laughs> yeah. And so that was that's kind of the end result. Oh, you of, circle that as number one. Yeah. That would be what I like to call a, a non-acceptable <laughs> outcome of this, specifically of this procedure. Yes. Correct. So so I go in and I and there's and first of all you go to a urologist right this is the male fertility clinic and the last thing you want to see is a, a staff full of gorgeous women yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what they were that's they're fun. all the most beautiful uh, uh, you know kind of twenty something administrative file you know I run the computer and make appointments and I'm I am gorgeous Damn type it. of people that's who they are. So that's the first thing that, that goes wrong. But then Natalia comes out, and <laughs> she's very, wrong. she's very warm and kind in sort of an Eastern Bloc medicine kind of a, a way. You know, she hot. comes out and, and she's Is no, she hot? no, no, that's good. Well, you know, I mean, she's. I, I didn't give her any keep it loose. <laughs> but, but here's the. <laughs> but, but she says to me, "Eat the right." Oh yeah, right. I said oh, yes. I, I'm not Just kidding. like I'm there. I'm not kidding. She says you are here for a vasectomy consultation. Yes. I will break you. <laughs> this is what I feel like. I feel like she's gonna walk me back to a treadmill and sensors and like 50 cameras, and I am the Russian in Rocky. And your doctor's back there like splitting wood. That's right. <laughs> so that's what she says. You have a vasectomy consultation. Yes, and I am terrified at this point. I said yes, yes, knowing that she probably could break my balls. <laughs> And uh, so I go into the office, and she says, "Sit, doctor will be with you in a moment." And she says, this, "Like as she's on her way out the door, I'm thinking if that's the woman who's going to be, you know, working on me, I'm going to have, gonna help I'm going to be challenged." <laughs> so he comes in, and he is the nicest, like kindest, grandfatheriest kind of older gentleman. I don't know oh. if my grandfather doing yeah, that either. No, he is, well, there's something to it. Mine's He's just like really nice. <laughs> okay. Nice is the only, I mean, just nice. Oh, are you funny? And he pulls out this black and white <laughs> ditto. What was that? Uh, a ditto. It was like the kind of photocopy, but really, really old, right? So it, ah. it like still has the purple yeah. kind of powder falling off of it. Of a uh, uh, penis. Cross section of the penis. Oh, cross penis. Just, oh, God. He scoots really <laughs> close up to me. He scoots really close up as I'm sitting in the stool, and he wheels his stool over to me, and he says, okay, let's talk about what we're going to do uh, here, and I'll tell you a little bit about this process. And... and uh, he says, "So you know, here's the here's the male anatomy. Here's the here's the uh, uh, here's the equipment." He says. He says, and he, he, he says, "This is the testy, the, the testicle, and this is this little sack on the back of it. That's where the the sperm goes." When you're Dude, can we go to chapter two? No, 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 this. no, no, no. Wait for dude, it. I got this, is important. <laughs> this is important. I know this part. This is important in our lesson. So when you're about to, he says to me, about to ejaculate. Uh, <laughs> the the sperm. Are clean. Yeah, no, we were. You already blew that. With the, the drop of the f bomb early on. Sorry so about that. I'm gonna go ahead and go all out. Do it. So this the sperm goes into the sacs, and then it shoots up the vas deferens and into the prostate, where it mixes with all the stuff, and, and that's what happens. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the the vas deferens right, and we're gonna tie off both ends, and then insert some tissue in between there, and so those so the sperm won't be able to get out. But that means, is one of the things that could happen to you, one out of every 1,500 men or so feel constant pressure 
every time they are aroused sexually because the sperm can't go anywhere. It just fills up in that little sack and gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, and then what? It, it explodes, nothing. dude. It nothing. Forever? He, so it's, it's like, like those things on turners. No, what he says is for about six done weeks. it pops out, that's what happens. <laughs> for, it come, yeah, it comes out of your pores. <laughs> it's like seventy, just big old huge no. bag. You're no, like, it's uh, and so he said there are about one in every thousand, one in every fifteen hundred guys actually have to resolve this by reversing the vasectomy. Oh, and I no. said again, this is uh, an unacceptable outcome right. for this procedure. Is actually having to go reverse it. He says, I, I know. I just have to tell you what what could happen. So there's that. There's recanalization. Are you aware of this? You know what happens here? This is, is where like that robot you kicked apart and it came back. Together. Yes. Hello. Like a replicator. Right. So it's exactly like that. He says to me, the human body has an amazing uh, 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 ability it's like Jurassic to... It's Park. Yes. To, life will find a way. <laughs> life finds a way. Recanalization is when the tubes untie and reconnect. Pete's next babies of a Velociraptor. Yeah. <laughs> See? I'm telling you, it's Land of the Lost. No, actually, it's... That's I'm going to birth a Skeksy. <laughs> Sounds like Jeff Goldblum should have said that part. It is, it is terrifying that that could possibly happen because you think this is a... You know, you're done. You might as well be, you know, Where's cutting them off. Where's that tissue thing go? I don't know. He says, so I, he, says, he, says, he says to me. <laughs> just any yeah. tissue? Your all... gums. <laughs> no. Just take some gum tissue. No. <laughs> Do they really take no. your gums? <laughs> it always so, comes off your butt, dude. You no, know that. No. So, uh, so, I mean, this list of things. Oh, and, and when they, he says, when we cut the, the vase, uh, some. I don't really like this word vase. Burn, that's what he keeps saying to me. But I don't some like of the, it at the all. term. Some of the it's sperm terrible. gets out into the, into the you know, tissue and creates tumors, little tumors that eventually will dissipate. But some men, one in about every thousand or fifteen hundred, they're there forever, and eventually we have to go in surgically and cut them out. You get like okay, a third on. ball? I guess. Wait a minute. That one out of fifteen hundred. This is what I'm That's saying. Poor odds. This is what I'm saying. So That's here's the deal. Good, if he you can play the lottery me. and your chance of one out of fifteen hundred, that's good. I'm yeah, gonna play those odds. That's right. Playing testicular lottery here. This That's is what bad. it is. Testicular lottery. It's awful. Are you playing, the, are you playing these odds, Pete? I made the appointment. I think there are other ways. He's rolling doing the dice. This. I am. I'm rolling the dice. Hey, some things are more important than odds, right? I need to. Play. I mean, some things are more important than the risks. And uh, one of them is business time. Yes. <laughs> and it's yes. time. It's time not to have to worry about that anymore. Yes. So doing, guys? We're good. We're good. So I. Uh, oh my so that's God. the deal. Is that crazy? That kind of brought me down like three notches. Yeah, Did I'm really, really bummed out right now. Yeah, yeah stomach the, hurts too. Like after you get It should. It should. Uh, and so here's what he's. My scrotum so. is just really depressed right now. <laughs> <laughs> All of these stories. It's like I've so, like I gotta tell a story about just being stories. kicked in the balls twenty or thirty times. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to um, go in, so I tell him, I said, I'm a little nervous about the whole process. You know, needles down there and all that. He says, oh, are okay. you awake when they do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you they have a reflective it? mirror around oh, the no, <laughs> <you laughs> And a big old vat for you to watch. <laughs> oh, my, you should uh, we, I'm sorry that we're missing Ted, he's in Boston, but he's he actually did apparently wow. he and the doctor just talked about golf all the time. What? Which I thought was really tragically ironic that they were doing that at the time. That was the consultation? No, no that, that was, was the, like the, the appointment. Thing. That was the oh, dealio. Was he did it, yeah. So you're awake. He's so like, I, told him, I told him, I said, look, I am uh, I'm pretty itchy about that. He says, not a problem. And he grabs his prescription pad and he says, here you go. And he writes a prescription. Here's a prescription for Valium. I want you to take two of these the night before. You're going to sleep like a baby. In the morning, you take another one. And when you get here in the chair, I'll slip you an Ativan. It'll completely take the edge off. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, he's like exactly I do it right. every time I drive to work. I would like, <laughs> is it like surgery where you need a marker and you circle the ball? That they're gonna... <laughs> no, but, you know, they do... Uh, they do ask you to uh, to come in pre-shorn, so oh, really? you got to make sure you're nice and clean before you go in. You would then... think with all the money you're paying, they'd do that for you. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. with some yeah. of those. Yeah. Never mind. That's why you get that receptionist back there. Bro. Right. Come on. Yeah. Earn your stripes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Earn your stripes. <laughs> so uh, the aftercare is uh, go home and lay down and don't lift anything for three days. And, That's fine. When can you and do then it? they say, then he says, you know, don't. Don't have any uh, unprotected sex for, you know, for a while. You have to come, go back in, and they have to do a sperm count on you. And so, he, because there's still Dude. some in the tubes, 
Yeah, yeah so you, you know when I got when I system. when I got my fridge, I was going to say they told me to like to you know run the ice maker yeah. ten or twenty times before you drank any of it. This is exactly the same thing. Oh, That's geez. true. Is, that is true. You yeah. do have to run it it's 10 like to twenty times. Ice. Ice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's, Actually, that's uh, an excellent analogy. Yeah, I thought so. Absolutely. I always count on Kurt oh. for the excellent analogy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's pretty terrifying. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean that's. Uh, so yeah, everybody I've talked to who's had it done, they all say the same thing. Ouch. Is it? Uh, all the all the women I've talked to whose say husbands have had it done said, oh, you're going to run it. Wait, 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 wait. They say that to they say the other women? No, or they say no, that to, to both. You? To both. You know. Oh, you're going to love it. That's just great. It's convenient. You don't have to think about anything. The dudes, when you get them alone, they all say, yeah. Oh, sweet Jesus. Anyone I've ever talked to about it has had it and says it hurts like hell. Yeah. Who wants it's that? Like of course, it feels like the. Of course, the women are going to be like, "Oh, it's great." I don't know. Is that because the ironic? option is they get their toothpaste? <laughs> well, there are other options, right? Yeah. What well, do I know about? Want to stay you know? married? No, I mean, I told my story last week about like the. You know, we alluded to it earlier. The whole, uh, the whole dating mishap and uh, and. I haven't really done anything since then. It kind of changed my mindset. So the other thing that I've basically been doing is just a lot of songwriting. It's just kind of turned into a couple of really good weeks with the songwriting for once. I got a new uh, bass player to go along with uh, my drummer friend. He's come over a couple of times. I've had like trio rehearsals at my house. And for the first time, that's uh, motivated me to actually start writing some more songs that can actually you know, work with a trio, hopefully with the intention of the gigging and couple of months, maybe three months or so, but uh, it's been interesting because I, even though I kind of see myself as a songwriter, I haven't actually written a lot of songs, and, and I don't really have like my own routine of how a song will be written. And uh, Right now, to be fair, it, it, what's your average length to write a song? Length? Yeah, like how, how long, long does it take to write a song? See, that's the thing. Is that, I mean, you can... Some you of can, them are going on seven years <laughs> or more. All right. I mean, but that's kind of like you know, when you don't really have very many data, very many data points, you know, yeah. doing an average kind of doesn't really make sense. You should get a whiteboard. Write it up. And analysis. what color is my poop yeah. while I'm yeah. writing the song? All right. You'd be surprised. Oh, any, any data is good data. <laughs> I think we just disproved that. But, but no, I mean, I had, yeah, I had a couple of songs yeah. that. I don't know, my first couple took about three months apiece. That was uh, the old singing group that I was in with Pete here back in yeah. college. Can we post some of these? Well, we should, be, well, we should clarify, yeah. though. This is hardcore gangster rap, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, right. really OG stuff. Kurt is... With a... Uh, uh, like well, I mean... Gat and... <laughs> this piece. It, yeah. This, it just... <laughs> uh, this first couple of songs were, like, for, you know, acapella singing groups in college where you got... Twelve guys all singing harmony and trying to convince themselves they look sexy doing it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and for the record, it's not. Whoa! <laughs> we <laughs> recently <laughs> discovered that it's not. Yeah, it took us about a, a decade and a half to yeah. figure that out. We yeah. look sexy to each other. Man. But Kurt, you know, I mean, he was a—he's uh, went to college for music, right? He's a jazz pianist. He's yeah, I mean, so I got my classical degree in piano from college, and then you know, a few years of more focusing on jazz since then, and. So it's kind of like there's a lot in my tool chest, but um, in terms of the songwriting itself, that whole thing is just kind of new to me. Over the last year, I've written maybe three songs that each took one night. So you know, that's where you, you know, it doesn't take very, very long at all. So I've got some songs that have taken weeks, some that have taken months or years, and some that have taken a couple hours. So you're saying if you swear off chicks, you'll write more songs? Oh, please. So here's what you do. Instead of getting the... Uh, that's what's been the, happening. <laughs> the, uh, That's right. The surgery, you can just start writing songs. <laughs> you keep your junk intact. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these last three weeks, I've I've yeah. come up with uh, I've come up with three new songs that are all partially written, and it's just a very bizarre feeling because you know, like when you get a song in your head that you like, maybe you really like it on the radio or something. 
and it's just catchy. You know, the tune's catchy, and you find yourself singing, and you're singing along, singing in the truck, singing when other people are around, and you don't know the words, like you haven't learned the lyrics, and you find yourself just singing completely random syllables or things that you find out are insulting if you actually listen to what you were saying. That's that's exactly what's going on in my head, except they're my songs, and it's because I haven't written the lyrics yet. Um, it's, it's a very, very strange feeling, so... And unfortunately, when I think that I'm about to finish a song, I get another song idea in my head. So I've got about three partial songs in my head right now, and I've got to start you know, pushing those through the other end of the creative process. So that's really these last couple of days has been me driving around in my truck listening to these things at top volume, singing gibberish, trying to find actual you know, syllables and phrases that would make sense. <laughs> and, My week was incredibly light compared to all of these things. <laughs> I think that's kind of par for the course, though, right? Well, this was very good for me to come here today. <laughs> I have no problems. No, you don't. Thank you. You really don't. <laughs> oh, my God. May your life serve as a warning no for No one's going to yes. touch my junk this week at all. <laughs> no, well, that could me. be a problem. I didn't even tell that part. Well, oh, yeah. Go ahead. He anthropomorphized <laughs> my junk. What? What's that yeah. mean? You put he it says, in here, why don't, you, why don't you stand up and... And uh, drop your trousers and let's take a look at your equipment. Make sure it's all ready. And I, I did. You know, it was. What cold. do you mean it's all ready? Well, apparently there's feeling up operation that goes on with the turn your head and the coughing and all this. Uh, and I'm tense, man. My stomach was tight. Because you, you know, don't those, like that. No. And he said, Well, they're running away. <laughs> I said, <laughs> Yeah, dude. They're totally listening to you. <laughs> They're running away. Don't worry, shut in. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're not oh going to get your dirty knife on me. <laughs> You're up to the elbow. We're so done. Oh, yeah, it's, man. It's not good. I'm sorry. But I hijacked your story. What were you saying? Oh. You've had a chillax week. Yeah, it was all right. I can't complain. Just, uh, let's see, what what went on? I, I, I taught a class in the evening, a marketing class. Someone brought a full-scale chopper in the classroom. You don't see that often You enough. really don't. <laughs> Not enough. Really. Often enough. No, no, you don't. <laughs> the amount of choppers in the college classroom. Still working on those fries? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, a, a, another person actually fabricated, built a bicycle chopper. So there's, I learned wait, all kinds of stuff. Let me back up. Yeah. I learned all kinds of stuff from these classes. So this presentation was on a group called Zoo Bombers. So a local phenomenon here in Portland, Zoo Bombers. Zoo Bombers. And what they do is they get these bicycles and they start up by by the zoo. And I guess there's a bunch of like single or well, double, double maps, lane roads. Oh. Down here up to oh, the... Oh yeah, that's it. And then they just fly down at night with no lights and no brakes. That's and the key. And they're brakes. on like children's bikes. They're on children's bikes. They're like little teeny 12-inch wheels. What? And they're drunk. <laughs> and they start at Voodoo Donut. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you haven't been to Voodoo Donut, uh, you can actually get an. I uh, had a Captain Crunch uh, riddled donut. You could get there was a there was the Voodoo Donut, which was like a Voodoo Man. Uh, let's see, what else? They had some bacon. Bacon. On top, you you would like this. They had uh, some bacon on top of a, a maple donut. donut. Bacon and, maple donuts. And it tastes like uh, pancakes and yeah. bacon. Wow. They good breakfast and it's all mixed together. Man, it's just it's but something that seems so wrong about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so right. right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so very God, right. I'd listen to you. I know. It's delicious. So, okay. uh, this guy fabricated a bicycle as part of their fi- as part of the final presentation, and I have a, a, an actual chopper which we'll post up to the website. Yeah, we will. He said he spent twelve hours fabricating <laughs> this chopper bicycle. And you're still failing him too after that. Well, I'm you know. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do what's right. You got to do. And they did get right. a bike. If, if, if everyone gets A's, you, you just yeah, you cheap in the grade. Very <laughs> You throw one under the bus, but that's not. <laughs> that's awesome. So, what are you going to do with the chopper bike? What do you do with that? I don't as a, know. As a, do you take it out to the track? Do you? I might just park it in the front of the driveway. Mm-hmm. No one will come up. <laughs> Because it's kind of, I mean, you show the picture, it's that kind of matte black, right? That it's all, of, yeah. Matte. The best part of the picture is leaning on a fence made of shipping pallets, <laughs> which is also at your house. When you see a chopper bike and shipping pallets fence, 
I would guess that it's safe to say they're not going to call for the authorities if there's a problem. <laughs> just handle it all right there. That's when that shotgun comes in hand. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else? That's fantastic. It was a it was an easy going couple weeks. You know, this, so this guy decides to go to Alaska. I don't know why this. Usually, I forgot the film the next day. Uh, what's his name? Steve Penn did it, right? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Sean Penn. I forgot that yeah, the first night. Yeah, that's right, Sean Penn. Steve Penn. That's like this no, dude Sean I knew Penn from wasn't prison. in it. I don't know who this was. <laughs> Your cellmate, <laughs> Steve Penn. He's a good guy. <laughs> Okay. What is your story? I've lost the thread. No, no, no. The, 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 this movie, Into the Wild. So he decides he's going to take off and go to Alaska. And he, meets, he wants to get away. Gets away. He meets all these nice people. Gets to Alaska, and nature just kicks his ass. <laughs> he brings this book. It says, here's what you can eat in the wild. So he's like, you know, all self-sufficient. He's living. He found a bus, like a hunter's like, bus that was uh, awesome. That, and he's eating these berries, you know, he's going to make it through the Alaskan winter. Pops these suckers down, flips the page, and it's stuck together, and it says, poison. Oh. And he's far oh. away. I mean, you can't just roll into town and get some anti-poison. And it's like, it's one... anti-poison. One, negative poison. <laughs> <laughs> one, one page was like, eat these berries, you'll be fun. And it was stuck to the one that flipped over and said, but these berries... These berries... Jack kill you. you. <laughs> Did you guys anyone see the thing on Opal B maybe about a month and a half ago? And it was like, Wait a minute. On Oprah? <laughs> no. On Opal B. Oregon oh, I thought you said O P R A. Oprah. I thought you said Oprah. Said, actually I saw I Sean Penn to on Oprah do... talking about this movie that we were talking about. But uh which, which one this are you was a... just turn your mic off. <laughs> well this was a documentary about some guy and it must have been in the seventies because it was the, the way it was shot. <laughs> But he did something very similar, except this guy, a badass. Like he totally like. You mean Bear Gillis? Oh, badass. No, 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 no. no, no. Bear Gillis is like this guy's bitch. This guy is like, he goes up there with like a saw. Matt did not say that. No, he did not. He did not say that either. Sorry, Bear. You're a dead man. Bear Gillis is going to eat your heart. He'll he'll jump out of a helicopter above my house and (laughs) then do something stupid. Uh, This guy totally had a saw. And an axe, and like, um, I think he had like a like a hunting rifle. Built himself a cabin, and lives in like the wilderness for thirty years. Thirty? It's insane. Yeah, he built it to see if he could get through the winter, and he had such a good time. That's doing what it. this guy did. This guy lived, oh, and uh, there's the difference. He lived up there for thirty years. <laughs> so yeah. See, this made a better movie. If yeah. You, thirty if, years. If is you too long. if you just live and are successful and happy, <laughs> yeah, this is not as good a movie. <laughs> This guy would be like, I bear, to, let me just say that all Barry Gillis has all. on his best day is maybe an extra sharp pinky fingernail. Yeah. He doesn't have no axe, ah, and knife, nothing. or gun. He's a man. He's a Brit, dude. How hardcore could he be? I saw him on a raft with sharks swimming all around him. That's pretty scary. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That. I don't know. I'm going to put your Survivor Man up against my <laughs> Survivor Man. My Survivor Man is 92 and dead. Or no. Uh, 92. <laughs> he's 92 and dead. I don't know if he's dead or not. I know he moved, he finally moved from his cabin in 95, and he moved to San Francisco, but I'm not sure if he's alive. So, well, based on the concept of uh, two pages getting stuck together, uh, some friends gave us a bag of mushrooms, that eat the edible kind, <laughs> the edible kind that you're supposed to drop into the uh, spaghetti. Or the tea. I refuse to eat it. Yeah. You're not supposed yeah. to eat other people's mushrooms. It only takes one, it only takes one mushroom. Or two. Now, I have the benefit of being able to get the anti-poison. That's right. I, I live in town. <laughs> That's right. The negative poison. But, and you could probably get that covered, too. Yeah. Well. You know the guys. You know. I know, the, I know the guys. <laughs> where, can, uh, where can people find Strap you? Strap on uh, and park in. Eh? Where uh, can people find you? They can find me in all the updates on cool that heart will desire. Uh, JoMoandCo.com. No ease on that. JoMoandCo.com. And uh, that's excellent. Go see those pictures of that giant 
baby. Some nice video up there too. It's a tearjerker. I'm not gonna lie. It is. It's a tearjerker. Giant it's a tearjerker. baby. It's a giant baby. Uh, Gook, where can people find you? You can't find me. I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually find yeah, me. Yeah, you got your action up online. I'm up. trying to help you plug yourself. You don't even know what you've got going on. I, your money. Come on. <laughs> Googler Racing. Googler Racing. G O U. G L E R. G O U. G L E R. Racing. Googler Racing. Dot com. Dot com. Very nice. No one had taken that. I thought it was going to be like a dot org or something. Yeah, no. dot I got lucky. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> dot info. <laughs> dot name. <laughs> uh, and uh, Kurt? As always, find me on kurtsiffert.com. I'll be writing about the different musical things that I do every few days. And posting uh, the uh, new uh, uh, multiple personality disorder uh, <laughs> songs that you're writing. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how they come together. Uh, hey, you, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How rude. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Kurt. I say that was it. Then you interrupted me, so <laughs> go ahead. So you have the floor. Did you see that video, Kid of Speed, where they rode through, like, Chernobyl? Yeah. On a motorcycle? Yeah. So cool. What's that all that about? That was fantastic. Man? That's creepy. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you post that on you the didn't blog? See? No, uh, you didn't post it. You I don't know how to post it. Especially the part the about how you have to stick to the center of the road to get too that. close to the sides of the road. The so radiation. in Chernobyl. Wait, there, did you send this out like weeks ago? Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I couldn't get over the ugly header on that website. I read like a line, line into no, it. No, you should oh, flip you through. Should go through yeah. it. It's crazy. There's like that because it's This chick gets her motorcycle. I saw that. And she rides through Chernobyl. Like now, and it's creepy, man. It's we're you have lucky. to stay. You need to read this because you have to stay from the away from the edges of the road where the old buildings are. You have to stay right in the middle of the road because if you don't, the zombies will get you. <laughs> Would oh. you go in one of those houses? What the radiation, radiation yeah. sticks There's to the vegetation radiation. more it's, than it seriously. to asphalt. Oh. It's yeah. ugly. ugly. It's seriously. Ugly. I thought ligers were going to come out or something like that. <laughs> It's All a right, small, small You gotta go check it. It's really great. We, we should post that on the blog. Let's and you can find it. us all at beer30live.com. Uh, and uh, come check it out. It's still in just shredded shreds of piece, but the shows are at least there. Yeah. And uh, so you can uh, ch- catch out, uh, check out all of our, uh, our back issues. And we uh, are still Beer 30 Live coming from the, uh, I don't even know where we are. It's Hands, uh, the Pyramid Brew House. Uh, in Portland, which is awesome. Uh, so make sure to come and check out the uh, the tacos, the uh, Chipotle, Chipotle chicken, chicken tacos, chicken tacos for happy hour. Very nice for the win. These are good. Until next week, this has been Beer Thirty Live. Train. <laughs>